Hello, welcome to Crafting Kitty. My name is Erin and it's Saturday. So that means it's time for my weekly roundup. And so my weekly roundup is where I just go through my weekend crafting. This was a strange week. There were a couple of projects I didn't touch because I was kind of stuck in my working area in the house because uh, I need to take some classes to keep my licenses. And of course, I always forget to do that until right before the end of the year. So every day I had a class I had to take, which is fine. Don't get me wrong, because I just, it's, um, it's a webcast, but it's not like a Zoom. So they just present, but they can't see you. So I get to there and crochet and knit away, work, 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 work. And that's how a bunch of things got done. But I'm just blabbering. I need to hop in and show you. I am excited. I have two completed objects and one object where I am on the final row of, which is exciting. And then I have, I'm going to show two, three works in progress. Um, I'm not going to show my cardigan, the Maya red cardigan. I, I, that was one, that's my living room project. And I didn't get to touch that. That was in a different area than where I was most of the week. My car project. A, Brian is out with bingo doing some shopping. So they have my car. B, I am angry with it because I was work, work, working away and thinking, oh, I'm almost done. I should measure it. And I held it up and I don't know what I did. My stitch count was correct, but it had like shifted. So it was, it's supposed to be like a rectangle and it was like a trapezoid <laughs> because on one end I must have been losing stitches, but somehow magically I was adding them to the other end. So it, <sighs> I mean, maybe had I sewn it together, I could have gotten like a really cool waterfall effect cardigan, but that's not what I was going for. <laughs> and that's an experiment for another day. I'm trying to do that pattern. So I had to tear it all out to where I thought the issue started, which was unfortunately down to the very first pattern repeat. <laughs> and... I'm starting pretty much over, but that's okay. I am very excited about the cardigan. It was my own mistake. Probably part of it is because I'm just sitting there working on it in the car and I wasn't paying super close attention. Um, But I mean, that's my theory is that I need a pretty mindless project for the car. If this problem develops again, I, I will make this pattern. So all I'll do is move the pattern out of my car put it in the basement, which is where the playroom and my office is, and then just move another project to the car. Simple as that. But let's look at my completed projects. I am so excited. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or my Facebook group, you'll already know that this is done. But I, of course, have to officially share it with y'all today. I finished my holiday cheer afghan from the creative gram oh that's the long side from creative grandma so this is how her pattern ends with just the white section and i think it's pretty my question is to you guys do you think it's a very very generous nice sized throw blanket it's not quite twin but very generous for for a throw and it does it will lay nicely on the back of our couch which is perfect um should i add a round of color to just top the blanket off um i have more of all all of the colors but i, I don't think i'm going to add another round of yet white um so i could do the solid red the solid green or a round of the variegated through the outside to just to just kind of cap it off i don't know like when i finished it i thought I, I it doesn't quite look done 
but I don't know. What are your thoughts? I asked on Instagram and um, there were a couple of votes for the green. And then uh, most people were like, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I don't know. Like in color could be nice, but it's also fine how it is. What's up, buddy? What's up? Oh, and when I laid it down there, I found um, an end I forgot to weave in. That's okay. I think I am going to go around and just do... What do you think? One or two rounds of single crochet? Because it ends with just double crochet. So I think the single crochet will just you know, tie it off nicely. Give it a nice end point. I'm thinking green. Thoughts? What do you think? I'm so excited that it is done though. This was a pretty big effort. The um the grand square blankets are always kind of tricky because like a single square isn't that much. And then you get working on it though and you realize, oh my goodness, I need 35 of those individual squares. And then to me, the um the connecting process never takes very long either. So yeah, I'm I'm excited, I'm happy, I'm thrilled, and it is actually completed by Christmas. So yeah, my first holiday blanket. I've never made one before. My other completed project is one that I didn't even show you guys that I started. I started and finished this all after I finished the holiday cheer blanket. And this is the Simply Twisted Cable Shawl from Sweet Pea Sid's Inspiration. And this is a very clever idea. So it's like a shawlette and it uses those fun crossover stitches there and it has a cable up the side and then it has this tail. And what you do is you put that on and then you can use the tail to come over and secure everything. Look at how awesome that is. And I'm gonna have a review on this yarn coming out this week and look for something a little extra to go along with that review. Um, But I love this yarn. This was Juniper Moon Farms uh, Moonshine Trios. It is um, Alpaca Wool Silk Blend. It is so nice. It is squishy. It is soft, um, but not as soft as I would expect an alpaca to be. It's a 40% alpaca, 40% wool, 20% silk. And I, I would have expected with that high rate of alpaca that it would be a little squishy, a little softer than it is. Um, but it, it seems to be not super wash wool. And the silk, I think, strengthened it up, and it's still very lovely. It would make just the most luxurious cardigan ever. Um, but yeah, uh, this. So Brian bought this yarn for me as a Mother's Day present. It doesn't. It, it's not good for my coloring. I know this. <laughs> this doesn't work on me super well. But I love it. I love how it variegated and worked out. And even though it's variegated, I think you get beautiful stitch definition. Um, Bingo has already tried to claim it. And I will attach a picture of her wearing it. And when you see it, you think it... You're going to know it has a new owner. <laughs> child is just too beautiful for any of our own good. So those are my two completed projects, which I am so stoked about. I, you just get that high, that like endorphin rush when you finish a project. And I had that twice this week and the rush of starting a new project. I started another project for bingo that's half done already, which um, actually, let's go ahead and show that one first. The bag is right here on top. It's in my Gen Con bag from when we went to Gen Con. Um, the, uh, Gen Con is kind of a gaming convention that started in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, 
and has was sold and kind of grew and now is in Indianapolis. Um, I yeah, kind of started as a, uh, if you didn't know, Dungeons and Dragons actually started in that same area. And that's kind of how the whole convention got started. But if you remember, little Miss Bingo came into one of these and told me she wanted a pink pair of pants made from yarn she had picked out. But she had also told me she wanted a sweater. So then... She changed her mind and decided she wanted purple pants. So I thought that's perfect, actually, because I really wanted to make a sweater out of that pink yarn. <laughs> so I made her John Boy's mini cowl, which she has been rocking and wearing all winter. She loves it. But I had a bunch of the yarn left over. So she told me she wanted pants out of that yarn. So I am... I'm just designing these myself based on some guidance from Mama G. Thank you, Mama G. And um, just kind of what I know from sewing up uh, Chomps' joggers and kind of the PJs I've made the kids. So Mama G, when she makes hers, she goes, she chains the length and goes up and down the length. I went a little different and decided to try to go the waist. And so I started with a bunch of rows of just single crochet and I did um, about five extra rows because I want to fold the top over and then I'm going to just slip stitch it down and either put in half inch elastic or a drawstring. I haven't quite decided. I might actually do both because you can never have too much. <laughs> so I did that. And then, and then let's just say bingo takes after mommy, whereas Chomps takes after papa in the junk in the trunk standpoint. So both Brian and Chomps are just no behind. Bingo and I, we, we got a little something natural going on back there. <laughs> so I switched to half doubles to give it a little, I find the half doubles to be a little stretchier um, but still dense because I wanted the bottom area to be dense enough for all of her play and whatnot. And then for, I did that for, I forget how many rounds. I wrote it all down. And then I switched to double crochet because I'm lazy and I just wanted to, to get the length of the leg done. And then I finished it off with kind of a shell bottom. And so this is one leg and then it'll fold over like this we'll have a seam there so it'll like seam together there crotch will form here and then the rest of the leg will be there and it should be awesome so yeah this is one leg completed i haven't even started the second but this took me i did this all in a day so a pretty pretty happy with that and then I'm planning on experimenting and making another pair of pants for her in the Mama G style where you go you chain the length of the pants first and work up and down that way um she would not stand still long enough for me to get that measurement <laughs> so I uh I was able to make these because I could call her over and like distract her and kind of hold it up and be like okay it works go ahead and play <laughs> but she when she saw the tape measure coming at her she was not happy although now that I'm thinking of it and saying it out loud I could have just chained distracted her measured the chain against her and and done it similarly there'll be another project there's always more projects so bingo's purple pants and then I have did I say I had three projects to show you three works in progress I have four I have four. Um, but this one I didn't work on, but I'm going to show it anyway. This one, oh, this is the, okay, I'm going to show this project. I thought this was a different project. <laughs> this is the one that I have less than a row. I am working currently on the final round of this project, and I am so excited. This is the Mia's Herringbone Chevron Cowl that I got from 
Mikey's Crochet Crowd channel, and I printed up the written instructions so I could, you know, cross off the rows as I was working on them so I didn't get lost. But yes, I am on the final round. This is going to be the prize. I'm using one of Ray's stitch markers that she made. Um, the One of the prizes for the creator spotlight this month. So it is kind of a cowl infinity scarf in Red Heart Unforgettable using a herringbone stitch. And then you use, you make some chain spaces and you're not going to be able to see it very well. But there are chain spaces where you make kind of a little chevron. Maybe if I hold it up against my shirt, can you see it? Kind of a chevron. Yeah, I think you can see it. Some chevron little chain space holes and yeah so this is kind of an at night project i do while putting the kiddos to sleep it um uses the herringbone stitch which is one that i'm not super familiar with so i'm always happy to practice a new skill and yeah it's been nice and quick um the pattern calls for two balls of unforgettable i thought i was going to finish the entire project with one ball. Um, I had to tie on this a second ball in the middle of my second to last round of the scarf. So I think I'm debating on making a little taller and doing another kind of round before finishing it off. I'll see what it looks like, but I kind of like the proportions as it is now. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the in the comments if you have any gut reaction either way on that one. Okay, now we will look at my Twists and Turns MCAL, which I did get a couple of rows done. And so I'm excited and proud of that. It is, here it is. And again, I'm using Blackbird Sycamore yarn. I got off of Etsy, hand dyed. The um, maroony is the color cleric. This um, kind of speckled, more neutral color is called pink jasper. This is in their sock base, and yeah, I I love the colors. I'm you know forging ahead. I am in. So you do, you did like a base basic start at the bottom here, and then at one point the directions tell you to do to repeat. A set number of rows 11 times. I am I am in the middle of my eighth time through. So I am I'm inching closer and closer to the end of clue one. And someday soon you will see clue two. From what I've heard, clue one is the one where people get bogged down, and that's certainly the case with me. So we have Another project that I didn't touch this month. This is the one I thought I was pulling up before. I just got my Harry Potter bags confused. <laughs> um, and Queen's Cross by Bridget. Check her out. Um, I didn't touch this one because when I showed it last week, um, Sharon Sutcliffe was very kind and messaged me because I was you know, lamenting the bobbins on the back and my bobbins had all fill, fallen out when I pulled it out. And she said her mother had been doing an intarsia knitting project and found a product on Amazon that like saved the entire project. She said she was ready to chuck it in the bin and then, you know, brought it back because of the ease of using these. So here they are. They're the, bo the bobbies. They're from Beadsmith. And these are, they're called Tangle Free Thread Bobbins. And don't let the word thread throw you off. I got, there are all sorts of different sizes. I got the two and a half inch one. And what it is, it's like a little bobbin for your sewing machine. But it's like silicon. And it pops like that. And you can trap your yarn in there, wrap it up, and put that back down. And it holds it! genius and this was seven something so this was like less than eight bucks on Amazon um, but she messaged me and then I looked it up and I had to order it so it had to arrive 
and then I had to find the time to put it together. But look at that gloriousness. Look. It is all under control. Sure, this one's wrapped around my needle. But look. They are not tangled upon each other. They are just hanging free. I'm not worried about them unspooling. Thank you. Thank you. If you do intarsia knitting, I would highly recommend this. And of course, those are all the, the little ends I have to weave in, which is another bummer about intarsia knitting, but that's okay. This, the bobbins are the bigger bummer. They are the ones that will cause you many headaches. And then I've already, I need two more of the gray bobbins to finish out my triceratops. So I've already got those wound up. And here, here's the legs and the body developing. There's its tail. There's its little mouth. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> I am very excited. And I think these bobbins are going to help immensely. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Sharon. And thank you so much, Sharon's mom, for finding those. Thank you. They're making this so easy. They are going to let you go and go on with your day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Remember, like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube thingies. At 1500, we're going to have another milestone giveaway. Um, yeah, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.